<laughs> yes. Hello everyone, you heard in my introduction that I'm originally Middle Eastern and you're gonna hear it in my accent. Who here would like to learn a phrase in Arabic? So it is my favorite phrase. It is Al-ilmu nur wal-jahlu dhalam. I know it's long. Al-ilmu nur wal-jahlu dhalam. And that means knowledge is light and ignorance is darkness. My earliest memories, I was in the Middle East in my grandmother's home in Amman, Jordan. We were arranging flowers in a glass vase. When she held it up and looked at me and said, do you see this perfect glass? A girl is just like it. If it gets cracked for any reason, you can never fix it or glue it back it will always be seen as cracked. And then she said, and who would want a cracked vase? That's the one we throw in the trash. I was five years old. <laughs> I didn't understand what she was talking about. But to my grandmother, the pure perfect glass represented my honor and my reputation. And any crack would represent any mistake that I would do that would affect how I am being perceived in the community. This story has been passed down for generations and it became an overwhelming obstacle in my life. And I learned more and more of these stories, but I also learned about the limitations of the culture by observing the women in my family. They were silenced. My life was pre-planned on my behalf and it was simple to grow up with an unblemished reputation and then enroll at a university as a way to buy time until I get married. Getting married early was so much more important than completing a degree or aspiring for a successful career. I got engaged when I was 19 to the most eligible bachelor in our community. And my parents were thrilled. Because of my unblemished reputation, his mom thought that I would be a great match for their family and arranged the initial introduction. I was open to this because this is what I was raised to believe is my purpose in life, but I only had one condition, and that, that I wanted to complete my education. I wanted to finish my bachelor's degree and be the first formally educated woman in our family. So both families agreed, we got married, and we moved to San Diego, California to follow his career aspirations. I thought that with this marriage and the move to the US, I could finally be allowed to discover my identity and be respected for who I am so far away from the culture. To my shock, this vase was FedExed overnight from Jordan to San Diego. The expectations were so much more strict and the limitations were just unbearable. Living in the US was just a matter of geography. At that time, I felt like his property, there to serve him and his family, completely controlled by them. Even simple things I wasn't allowed to do. I wasn't allowed to talk to my mom more than 15 minutes a week. I wasn't allowed to leave our home without permission. I wasn't allowed to have friends. So even with my disappointment, I continued to live the life that was expected of me. But then years later, I found that I was struggling. I was feeling empty, unhappy, and lost. And I started to question my own identity and purpose in life, but I could not come with any satisfying answer. In addition to my internal struggles, I was also facing a culture shock. I was new in the US. I was observing my new community of Americans. You acted very differently than what I was accustomed to. You seemed free. You seemed confident. You didn't seem to have any fears related to cracking your glass vase. <laughs> All I wanted was to be just like you. I knew that something needed to change. I could no longer continue to live with these limitations, 
But at the same time, I was horrified because if I decided to take action and leave that marriage, that would be perceived as if I cracked my vase. And I was warned by my family that any decision that I would take similar to that would not be tolerated and it would result in a major situation for me where I, my safety would be at risk. One day, I woke up too depressed to even get out of bed. And all I could do was just stare at the wall. At that time, I was not even 25 and I felt that my life was over. There was nothing left to live for. As sad as that day was, it was also so powerful because it taught me that I have a choice. I can either continue to live with these limitations and live to satisfying everyone around me or live for me. I chose me. I packed and I left. I went to bed that night knowing that I cracked the vase and as terrified as I was, I knew that I made the right choice. It turned out the situation so much worse than I've ever imagined. Not only did most of my family disown me, but one decided to have me killed. And that in the Middle East, we have something called honor killing. And specifically in my small community, if a woman does anything that the father or the uncle or the brother disagree with, like leaving an abusive marriage, they would kill her. And they call that honor killing because they believe that they're bringing the honor back to the family. They may end up going to prison for a month or two, but they would leave with celebration. And the one who has been attempting to kill me for the last 20 years is my father. The only reason I'm alive is because I'm here in the US and he's in Jordan. He's constantly threatening, but he doesn't speak English and he wouldn't be able to navigate. And that's coming here. That's the only reason I'm alive. So I don't go there. And by the way, I was happy with the pandemic and closing the airports. So <laughs> I may be the only one. So at that time, I knew that I wanted to change my story from a young girl filled with fears and haunted by expectations into a new woman, self-empowered, confident, and responsible for her own choices. I just didn't know how to do that. And the only way I know of is education. And I decided to enroll in a master's in business program at the University of San Diego. After my first semester, a professor, his name is Dr. Starling, he reached out to me and encouraged me to run to be the president of the student organization. I never saw myself as a leader. I was programmed to believe I'm a follower. I was very surprised that he even asked me to do that. I thanked him and I said, I'm sorry, I don't know how to be a leader. I don't know why, every time he saw me, he would encourage me to run. So I just wanted him to leave me alone. And I, I said, if I agree, most likely nobody's gonna vote for me. So I, agree, I agreed to run and I was elected. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize then that that moment, as terrified as I was, was going to change me for the rest of my life. A journey of my leadership discovery just started. After a couple of years, I graduated with my master's in business. I was hired by IBM for their leadership development program, got to live and travel around the world, and was mentored by senior executives. These gave me building blocks, and soon I started managing global teams and was responsible for strategic client relationships. I wanted to empower everybody around me with the new skills that I was developing. And so many people would reach out to me wanting me to be their mentor. Now, it is my opportunity to give back and help people across cultures discover their potential, but mainly help them to shatter the limitations that are stopping them. One thing I know for a fact, we are all living with vases, regardless of our background. They come with different colors or shapes, 
but they all have the same effect of inhibiting us from living the life that we deserve. Whether they're cultural, family-specific gender, or ethnic, or internal vases that we individually impose on ourselves. It is the negative voice in our head that's telling us we're not good enough, smart enough, successful enough, or with the right height or shape. We allow these limitations to inhibit us, not realizing that we have the choice to smash them all along. Shattering my limitations was the best decision of my life. To my grandmother, the pure perfect glass represented my honor and my reputation. But to me, it represents the unrealistic limitations that I choose not to obey. I look at all of you and I wonder, what vases are you living with? Who told you not to follow your dreams? Who told you not to be yourself? What is holding you back? Is it your culture, a relationship, a job, or is it you? Are you living with the expectations to protect your glass vase? We all have a choice. We can keep our glass vase perfect, accept an empty life, disconnect it from our authentic self, and then pass it to the next generation and expect the same thing from them. Or we can simply smash it. Smash it into a million pieces. Smash it with all the fears, the worries, and shame that it represents. What would you choose? Okay, you can breathe. So, <laughs> how many of you, you've been waiting for this vase to get shattered? So I am Dima Gowie. My talk is always about shattering limitations. I focus on leadership, helping people discover their potential, advancement of women in leadership, and also diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I do that with motivational talks, but I also do it with leadership, working across generations, working globally talks. How many of you would like to shatter a vase? Because I have a surprise for you. When you shatter one, another one appears. <laughs> How many of you would like to come here and shatter a vase? Come on. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. We're all, oh, <laughs> too late now. We only have one. You should have, you should have done that earlier. Um, I want you all to stand up. And we're going to count down three, two, one, and then shatter it. Do you know? what would you like to shatter? Internal limitations, internal vases that you're just ready to let go of. Yes. Okay, so now, I want you to, let's practice. Three, two, one. Shatter it! Okay, that's why we practice, so here we go. So don't throw it until they say shatter it. No, no, let, well, th three, two, one. Shatter it! <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It was a pleasure spending time with you.